Now the following will be a guide on the Psychology and Journal Assessment. Um, for the SL students, this um, internal assessment requires you to replicate an experiment and analyze it with use the use of descriptive statistics and overall the report will be between a thousand and a thousand five hundred words. For the HL students, it, it's a bit more in depth. Um, instead of uh, application of a study, the experiment must be modified and after that it is required to design, undertake, analyze and report on the experiment that has been conducted. And um, not only are you using descriptive statistics in this one, but also inferential, which we'll go a bit deeper into. And also the report is 1,500 to 2,000 words, which is about 500 words more than the SL. Uh, the internal assessment starts off with the abstract followed by the introduction. The abstract will be written as the last thing, so when you are starting your internal assessment, you do not have to worry about it. In the introduction, it should be about 600 to 800 words, just you know, as a suggestion, so the rest of your stuff fits in the word limit. But um, there should be some background theories and studies that explain um, what you are doing with your modification of the study. And uh, this guide is actually focusing a bit more on the HL part of it, which is the modification, since it is uh, sort of like an upgrade from the SL part, which uh, is a bit more simpler when you can use the results. I mean, you can use the same method as you did as the experimenters did when the experiment was first conducted. And um, for the HL students in the introduction, it clearly needs to be said what your um, null hypothesis and experimental hypothesis is. And it is very important. So you, later on, you can uh, nullify or uh, accept your hypothesis. Uh, for the, desi uh, the design, which is a part of the method, um, it is important for the HL students to show your variables of the experiment and also uh, it should, there should be a clear identification and documentation of how ethical guidelines are followed. Now, uh, ethical guidelines are very important in psychology and many students have failed because of the guidelines that, uh, because the guideline has not been followed and uh, these guidelines even simple facts such as letting um, participants eat anything or uh, just any form of any form of uh, physical contact or any embarrassing things that could happen to the experiment that would be unethical are really important to not happen. And as I said, students have failed because they have uh, not followed the guidelines for this. So this is a very important thing to consider when doing the, the modification of your experiment, but hopefully um, your teacher will know if your experiment is ethical or not based on um, studies that you can, the design that you show them. Uh, the next part would be finding the participants and as I said you're making an experiment in um, in your school so what you can do is I uh, use a opportunity sampling, which is what most people do find about 10 to 15 people, which is good for these IAs, and uh, just get any classmates, anyone over 16 that is able to participate in the experiment. And it should be stated that the reason why you're using a specific kind of sample because this also gets you these important two marks. 
Uh, for the procedure, it should be pretty well planned out. The information that you are obtaining, it should be relevant to what you are investigating. So, and also, if if you are if you are asking any additional information, such as nationality or age or something, be sure to include that in the discussion and don't just forget about it completely because that seems to be a problem if um, it is asked to, for example, list the name and gender and nationality, but these are then not considered at all when you're actually evaluating the results. And, you know, you, you have to include the necessary materials that um, you're using, and these should be in the appendices, which uh, also go with the report format, but uh, and that we'll discuss those later. If, uh, once you have your results, it is uh, you have to show them clearly. This can be done through graphs and diagrams and tables and all all this, and it should be evaluated clearly. And, you know, the graphs should have their headings. They should be accurate, and clear, and you know there should be uh, re relevant hypotheses of the study. Um, these results need to be presented in some sort of a table just in order to obtain these marks because uh, without a table there is no way that you can clearly state or show what your experiment is uh, supporting. This next bit is the uh, inferential results and this is a bit harder to do than to just describe your results. This, uh, in, in this part, you will need to actually evaluate what you found, and there are various tests that you can do for this part of the IA. And uh, the most common test, most likely used for this, is the Wilcoxon sign test, which shows a pretty um, interesting way of looking at your results and seeing if um, if they make sense to what your hypothesis is are asking. And the results of these inferential statistical tests should be accurately stated and in this part it should be said whether you accept or reject your null hypothesis. Okay, moving on to the next part is the discussion which is uh, a large majority of your entire um, entire IA along with the introduction. Now the discussion could be up to a thousand words, um, which is for HL students almost half of the word limit, but keeping it around 600 to 800 would also be um, pretty good. This In this part of the um, IA you will need to discuss your results, and this can be um, done uh, after the evaluation of your uh, results of descriptive and inferential. And here is where you should be saying whether um, these results can be trusted, whether that they are accurate. And it is similar to the introduction where you um, have some support from other studies. They supporting your hypothesis, you should say if these studies are similar or have similar, have similar results to what you found in your study. And uh, what else needs to be discussed is the limitation of the study, the participants if you, if you found um, very suitable participants for the experiment or not and also some advantages, disadvantages that the study uh, had in it. If you were able to keep the variables constant or if you were able to change the variables as you wanted. And then also for the HL student, since you are already modifying the uh, experiment, other modifications and suggestions for future research are should be mentioned here, and the and then 
it'll end with the conclusion that your conclusion should state whether your hypothesis was clear or um, whether you can just just a few words of just saying whether or not you uh, managed to do the study as you wanted, whether you got the right results, if it is supporting the research that the experiment or the modification is based on, which was the experiment, the original experiment, and you know, just a few words discussing whether or not it supports what you wanted it to support. Uh, for the citation of the sources, this should be done in the APA format for psychology, even though all other IB subjects are done in the MLA format. Psychology should be done in the APA because this is the style you'd be using in university and they are prepping us for that. Now, the in-text citations, they need to be included in, um, in in your IA and the citing for where you got all your background research, all your theories for your introduction and discussion should be shown before the appendix and this should be under the title works cited. Okay, for the report format, this is probably the easiest criterion to get the points on. This is simply done by being within the word limit. Whatever you're writing about, it should be under 2,000 words and above 1,500, and that is simply how you get one mark for it. Um, simply labeling the appendices appropriately, which is also another easy thing to get marks for, and the abstract is also included in this, but this is just a summary of the um, whole experiment and should just be worried about once you have written everything else. And they should also include a table of contents and, um, in the uh, after the type of page just so it is a clear and easy to read uh, IA. Uh, hopefully this guide helps you guys. Um, I will probably be making a few more of these guides and hopefully at least some students will be able to find these helpful instead of reading the rubrics and not really grasping what it's really needed to do. Maybe this guide helps you a bit more. So thank you for watching.